There's nothing worse than going out to a nice restaurant where you think you're going to have a tasty meal, but it turns out the food actually is really quite bad. You feel so defeated. You read the reviews on Google or Yelp. The restaurant had like four and a half stars. You would have so much rather have just stayed home and thrown together something that was cheaper and easier and probably would have tasted better than whatever food you got at said restaurant. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you the methods that I use in order to drastically increase the odds that the restaurants I've chosen to eat at are going to be good and that they are going to be worth my time and my money. The first thing you need to do when you're looking for a restaurant online is that reviews, particularly out of five stars, are not gospel and should always be taken with a grain of salt. Because listen, if I'm being honest, most people really don't know what they're talking about when it comes to finding good food or finding a great restaurant to eat at. Furthermore, simply simplifying down a review to a five-star rating is a horrible way to actually rate a restaurant that you've dined at. Think of all the different things that contribute to a rating or a review. It could be the quality of the food, it could be the service, it could be the dining environment. All of these things are separate and should almost have their own weight when you decide where to go out and eat. But in a five star review, you don't know what that out of five stars is even referring to in the first place. I mean, think about it. Billy Big Boy might give a restaurant a five star review because the portions are enormous and the food is cheap, but the actual quality of the food and the ingredients used are absolute garbage. And yet that review has the same weight as someone who actually knows what they're talking about when it comes to finding a good restaurant and who has taken the time to articulate what she or he wanted to say about the restaurant when they made that review. Because odds are you're not actually scrolling through all of the reviews that have been posted and reading each one individually to figure out what went wrong with that person's experience or what went right. You're just looking at the number. And these obscure and different reviews can heavily skew whether the restaurant is seen as a good restaurant or a bad restaurant. And you don't know which one of those reviews is making the biggest impact. Furthermore, people can review bomb fantastic restaurants for a multitude of really ridiculous and arbitrary reasons. I can't tell you how many reviews I've seen posted on some of the places I really enjoy going from people who are complaining about the restaurant not being able to supply them with food that fits into their arbitrary and extremely specific dietary options or dietary needs, I suppose. Look, I can understand the struggle these people might face when they're trying to find a place to eat, but I really don't think it's fair to give a restaurant or a mom and pop restaurant for that matter, a one star review simply because they couldn't appease your raw plus vegan plus only consume the food rectally with a straw and smoothie form type of diet. I mean, you can't assume that every place you're going to buy food from can appeal to your one out of a million people requirements. I've also seen people review bomb great restaurants for very honest and reasonable mistakes that might have happened. Like this woman at one of my favorite restaurants in Seattle. She complained that one of the rolls that she'd ordered when they're wrapped up in foil and you can't tell which one is which was the wrong type of meat and as such should get a one star review even though that's a relatively easy mistake to make and can be fixed relatively easily as well without much harm add to no fault of either the restaurant or the customer um, and yet that warranted a one star review it just doesn't really make sense to me now if she were to go up and say hey you made a mistake i need you to fix it and they didn't fix it that would be a different problem but clearly this is a reasonable error to make i don't think it's representative of either the quality of the food or necessarily the quality of the service either i mean let's be reasonable here people everyone who's working in a restaurant is just a person they're right they're not going to be perfect all the time and that's an expectation you should always have when going out to a restaurant. But as such, I think these reviews should be merely used as a rough guideline to decide whether or not you're going to go to that specific restaurant and it's sort of your first line of defense uh, to figuring out if the place you're looking at is good or not. Now, what should be a major determining factor for you when you're trying to find a good restaurant is the menu size. The easiest and most readily available way of determining if a restaurant you want to go to has high quality food or can produce good meals is the size of the menu. I have found time and time again that menu size is inversely proportional to the quality of food you can expect from the restaurant. 
meaning that the larger the menu, the worse the quality of the food is going to be, and vice versa. I mean, just think about it logically for a moment. If you have a restaurant with like 30 or 40 different menu items that are all like relatively different, how can you expect them to keep all of those ingredients on hand and prepare that food fresh for you when you order it when they have like 40 different options that you could potentially order from? It's just not reasonable to believe that that's even possible to do even in a larger restaurant. You have to think about what is the turnover of this really specific dish that I've ordered and are the ingredients that they are using or including in those dishes still even fresh once you order? Now I'll admit, some restaurants can actually get around this, uh, specifically like Southeast Asian or Chinese restaurants where they focus specifically on stir fries. You know, it's really easy to just have all of those ingredients pre-prepped and then when someone orders, they're just doing a different combination of the ingredients uh, for every stir fry or dish that they're doing and it takes them five minutes to cook it up. It'll be fresh when it comes out. But let's say you're going to like an American or an Italian restaurant or something like that where each meal has to sort of be prepared and take like takes a while for it to be put together. That means that all of those different dishes that they've included have basically just been fridged and are getting reheated for you, but you don't actually know how long it's taken or how quickly they are going through each of those dishes. So you run the risk of getting something that's like two or three days old. But like I said, for a restaurant to have 20 different versions of burgers, steak, fish, pork, all these different meats, different vegetables, different carbs that they're serving with their meals, it's just not reasonable to assume that that is going to be fresh and ready for you when you order it. I mean, there's no possible way to have that diversity of choice without sacrificing something somewhere when it comes to preparing that dish for you. For me, I tend to find that the sweet spot for most restaurants is around 10 to 15 items total. So that means that they have between the appetizers, the entrees, and a dessert if they have any. 10 to 15 items is like you really shouldn't go over that. But this is just a rough estimate for you to understand as you're looking for places to go eat. As a rule of thumb, less options means better options. Now the next thing you're going to need to learn how to do is how to analyze the pictures of the food that have been posted within the reviews from other people. Now you're not actually looking at like the aesthetics of the food or necessarily how it's like plated specifically. You're looking for something a little bit more in depth. What you're looking for is how is the food prepared? What is the quality of the ingredients that are being used in the dish? How busy is the plating? Is the restaurant keeping the dish relatively simple? These are all things that should be going through your head as you're looking through the restaurant and what they have to offer. Now it might seem weird or tricky at first, but as you gain more practice doing this, you'll learn what you need to look out for and you'll learn what's important to you as a diner of what you value the most from said restaurant. And as you sort of develop that sense, it can make a huge impact on deciding whether or not that's a restaurant you're interested in or not. There's a lot more information available to you when looking through photos of food uh, that might meet your eye, no pun intended. And the last thing you need to understand is that price does not equal food quality. Or rather, the more expensive a restaurant you dine at or the more expensive a restaurant is does not guarantee that the food is going to be any better than a restaurant you could find that's a hole in the wall. In fact, I can almost guarantee that the more expensive a restaurant you dine at, the more likely you are going to be disappointed with your dining experience. A lot of high-end restaurants attempt to sell you the delusion of fine dining with their insanely high price tags when in reality, the actual quality of the food and the quality of the dining experience they're selling you is mediocre at best. And once your food actually arrives at the table, you'll realize that it was thrown together with little care or little appreciation for what they were actually going to serve you and that these high-end restaurants are just a facade for moving your money into their pockets. Now before certain cooks or chefs get angry at me, this is a very broad generalization. Some restaurants are expensive and offer an excellent dining experience, but correlation does not necessarily mean causation. So just remember that when you're trying to impress your date maybe on a night out, that sometimes a more modest dining establishment can actually provide you a better, more satisfying experience than a very expensive restaurant. But these three tools are the strongest items in your arsenal for defending against 
poor dining experiences and finding really great places to go and eat. They've served me well over the years, eliminating bad restaurants and finding great ones. While of course it's not a perfect science and it's not guaranteed to work every time, it does drastically increase your odds of finding that diamond in the rough that you've been looking for. Anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something and let me know if these tools really help you guys eliminate and find better restaurants. If they do, feel free to drop something down in the comments. Anyways, until I see you guys again, I hope you all have a wonderful day.